All right, guys. All right, let's get this over with. Right today, we got um, we got characters on newcomers ultimate that are not DLC characters. Nice little organization there for this video. With that said, starting off Inkling. This is actually a character who I've given a lot of like players lessons for. Like probably one of the most common characters I've taught people to play, which is funny considering I'm not known as Inkling player, right? So something I noticed a lot from Inkling players is that. They don't know how to use back air to condition people, and I don't mean to spam back air, which, you know, some people do and some people don't. I mean using back air and seeing how people react and punishing, like, oh, you back air someone's shield, and you kind of, like, you know, drift back, like, ah, pretend I hit your shield, and then you just, I drift back, and then I go, alright, what are you doing? Oh, you're jumping at shield? Alright, I'll punish the jump aerial. Oh, you're gonna hold shield? Alright, I'll back air again or I'll grab you. Oh, you're gonna, like, roll? I'll chase the roll down. And, like, I don't see a lot of thinking players using like that and thinking about the follow-ups because back here by itself isn't going to hit people often it's going to leave you vulnerable but it's a really scary move to deal with an inking player is mixing that up with like really good movement to make it hard to tell if you're even going to back here or not because if someone shields and then just starts shielding with inkling like you can grab them you can just have like down bees as pressure so, yeah also a bonus little thing inkling players uses move more neutral b it's it's a really good move, trust me. I don't see him use it enough. It's actually an absurdly good move that is not spammed off by any England player at all. And every time I give less than an England player, and I tell him to use this move, and they're like, wait, the buzz, you're right? And they're like, I know I am, I'm the buzz, I'm never wrong, ever. Okay, moving on. Okay, so for Ridley, this is a character whose defense is pretty bad. He's a big character, of course. This out of game is very slow. Gets combo, yada yada, right? So. As a result, this isn't really a character that can afford to play long games, I should say, and afford to like play more passively. So it feels almost like telling, you know, someone to play Elite Smash style, but I feel like with Ridley, kind of embracing that like go for a hard reads, go for bigger risks type of play style is kind of correct. It's just important to mix up your stuff, you know, like you have a command grab that's a little bit slow, but like if people are scared of like your aerials and your forward smash and stuff, it can be good. Like you you have you know a lot of mix-ups, you have a lot of damage, you have a lot of ways to kill people early, and especially with your multiple jumps and like your massive aerials, you can kinda of go for some big plays. And you shouldn't really shy away from it, as long as they're not like stupid, right? Like there's a difference between like good big plays and doing like charging forward smash for fifth time at the ledge. And kind of recognizing those situations where you can blow people up and make and mix people up so they don't know what you're gonna do is important. Also, honestly, honestly, real players is not forward tilt. I feel like this move is just a really solid move that I see some use and it's like really good when they use it a lot. Belmont players, Belmont players. First of all, if you're playing Simon and not playing Richter, just don't watch this video, please. I don't want to give you guys information and have like tips. I'm, I'm sorry, Simon players. Only Rector players deserve it. He's a superior Belmont. With that said, I, I see so many Belmont players online and they just do this. They just throw projectiles and take this and take that and oh my god, stop it, right? And sure, they're good projectiles, but they're all situationally good, right? Like, neutral B is a good, like, anti air. Side B is a lot of uses in neutral, for, like, setups, like, using backwards hit. There's a lot of things. And then down B is, like, you know, ledge chop tool. Can be a hard retool sometimes but really like the, the bmb of this character is spaced like aerials like this right here this is dumb there's a lot of characters who can't quite answer just like angled up and downwards aerials with good reactions mixed with like some power tails and you can legit just do this to people do this a lot mix in some of these go back to doing this throw it in this every now and then just to mix up someone's timing a little bit and it is dumb and neutral. And also, I don't see people with this. Something people like to do a lot is just kind of like jump at like, you know, the Belmonts and like abuse the fact that they've kind of guessed with the angle of their whip attacks. Something that's really good to deal with people counterplaying that is just jumping at them and nearing. Belmonts there are surprisingly big, I feel like. And since it's a multi hit that's pretty fast, just kind of like doing this towards people, oops, like this towards people, catches them jumping, even on the ground sometimes. And between just the aggressive play you don't expect from Belmont and the multi-hit, you'll get a lot of surprise hits off just straight up narrowing a bit aggressively. I'm feeling generous there with all like these characters getting two tips, dang. 
Let's go, man. All right, this character is one tip and one tip only. And that is when you're spamming your projectiles right here, your neutral Bs, your side Bs, or whatever the hell you're doing, try to use them outside of punish range. Because this side B, at like this range, if someone blocks it, they get punished pretty easily, right? But if you do like this, it's really hard to punish that on block, even on whiff. Like, it's kind of just safe, and you only really sacrifice stage control. And honestly, if you just start doing this and like use that safe pressure, to apply a mix-up game of more projectiles, or maybe running close and like threatening people with like grabs, dash attacks, jumping back inside being again, right? If you kind of like give up the space and take it back, it's really hard to approach a K rule. You, you ever try finding a K rule thing? Oh, it's K rule. It's gonna be free, and then losing the just well-spaced side B and neutral B spam. Well, it can happen, and you can be the one doing it. So for Isabel, one thing I've seen a lot from a player named Mr. Zircon in particular, and a few others, is ending combo strings with side B at like low, mid, and high percents. And it's surprisingly a lot more effective than I think. Just something like this, and then like side B someone. And I feel like it catches people like, like panic options, like bad double jumps, bad air dodges, people just kind of standing there not knowing what's going on. Kind of like things like this, right? It is a plot from views as well. Like, you like experiment with it. Because it's not like a neutral tool. As an edgeguard tool, it's iffy. But it definitely is a janky way to catch people off guard. And people start getting afraid of like the, the side B jank out of strings. You can start being more aggressive against them, I feel like. Because there's so many things to think about when Isabel can do like side B at someone at string or like just chase them with like fares and dash attacks. Also, buff Isabel, please, devs, please. Incineroar players, just don't play him. Come on, it's Incineroar. He's the slowest character in the game, and there's projectiles everywhere. What are you doing? <sighs> okay, okay. For, I don't want to say the actual advice, but the useful advice. Don't just kind of spam counter willy nilly, unless, like, you're confident you can get in and utilize the damage buff from the counter, also. Wario is an awful character. Just hold, hold it up, hold it up. Cut the clip. So, okay, back to us talking about the counter thing. So, even when you counter something, you're still taking a pretty good amount of damage from it, right? Like, Snake Grenade, 12.5 damage, right? Yeah, like, it does, like, about 40% or so damage, even when countered. And that adds up really quick when you're fighting projectile characters or disjoint characters constantly swinging at you. It's almost like the Pichu effect when you use too many electric moves where it's like you're just kind of taking almost the stocks worth of free damage if you do it too much. Like if I'm playing Min Min, right? And I see Incineroar, first one moving the matchup. Secondly though, and like they, they counter like 10 R moves, I basically hit them with like three or four of those for free. Think about when you're using it and if it's worth it at the time. And also keep in mind that you know, counter that the buff goes away after time, after getting grabbed, or taking things like 30% damage. So as well, a lot of ways to remove it. Yo, this walk is kind of sick, by the way. Yeah, guys, with that said, peace out. Until the next video, hope these help out like always.